What's going on, Colts fans? Welcome back to another episode of Colts Brawl. I am your host, Cody Felger. Uh, joining me, your other host, Mr. Justin Bowerly. Justin, how are you doing, my friend? I am doing great. We've got a lot of fun things to talk about this episode, so I, like, I'm ecstatic about this episode. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we do. We have a lot of cool stuff coming up in this episode. I'm really pumped for it, man. It should be some really awesome discussion. Uh, without further ado, Justin, why don't you introduce us to where we're heading first, and we'll continue down the road and lots of fun content to talk about today. Yeah, sure thing, Cody. Um, so at, to start off, uh, we've been doing the all-decade team voting um, through social media for the last several weeks. Well, that has finally come to an end, and we have our all-decade team. Uh, just a quick rundown of who we got. Our offense at quarterback, we've got Andrew Luck. We've got Joseph Adai, Reggie Wayne, T.Y. Hilton, Dallas Clark, Jack Doyle, Anthony Casanzo, Quentin Nelson, Ryan Kelly, Ryan Deem, and Braden Smith. Um, that's our starting 11 there. Um, on the defensive side, we've got Dwight Freeney and Robert Mathis on the defensive end positions. Nico Autry and Grover Stewart, who I think everybody on Colt social media has really determined that we did not have a great defensive tackle position for a decade at this point. I mean, those are our two best guys. Um, then our linebacker positions, we got Anthony Walker, Darius Leonard, and then Robert Mathis made it for the second time on this team. So he's taken two positions here. Uh, with the corners, we got Vontae Davis, Kenny Moore, Safeties, we got Antoine Bethea, Mike Adams, and then Adam Vinatieri and Pat McAfee. That was a landslide vote. And then our return, we actually have T.Y. Hilton. Um, Cody, my question for you here is, if this team played together for an entire decade over from 2010 to 2019, all at either where they currently are or if they're an older player at their prime, how many teams would that team win this season? Hmm. That's a good question. Yeah, this is a fantastic team overall. And I, I do kind of wonder because, you know, it's like all these interesting different things, you know, you throw in some of those receivers, the offensive line, you know, Andrew Luck, obviously, he never had even close to this. So I honestly think this could be a 12 to 13 win team, just simply because Andrew Luck is fantastic. And uh Giving him pieces like that, I think, would just elevate his game to another level, giving him the proper protection, giving him a defense. I think it's just something that is so foreign <laughs> to think about. But honestly, yeah, I think this team would be one of the top teams in the ASC South, a deep playoff team at least, and definitely a team that, uh, that would probably compete for a Super Bowl or two in the next decade. And so certainly, yeah, I, I think those guys are all fantastic. And, you know, I, Obviously, some of these younger guys now, um, you kind of wish, like, for example, the defensive tackle position, I kind of wish DeForest Buckner was an option because he would have been a massive upgrade over both of those guys, over, over Danico Autry, which he will be this year. But, but, yeah, overall, this is a really solid team, I think. And, you know, if you're getting them at the height of their careers, yeah, I think this is definitely one of the top teams in the ASC. Yeah, I, I was thinking, like, 13, team, or 13 wins at minimum. Uh, just because of how good this this team would be, this offense would be killer. Having that offensive line, and then you know having Joseph Adai back at his height, and then with Andrew Luck and Reggie and Ty, this would be an unstoppable force. Um, I think the one position we'd really struggle here—I mean, defensive tackle—our rush defense would not be that great. Um, our, I think our pass defense would still be fine because you got you know the duo Dwight Freeney and Robert Mathis. Uh, still leading that charge so I think the pass offense would be a slightly better than the rush defense but this this would be a pretty pretty good team and that kind of leads my next question here Cody if we had this team for 10 years how many Super Bowl rings do you see us having in that 10 year span yeah so this is like this next coming year so like all the players that are currently in the in the league is that kind of what you're asking so well I if if we took this all decade team decade. from 2010 to to 2019. Oh, I see. I mean, we lost the okay. Super Bowl in 2010, and then that's really where this kind of kicked off is after that that Super Bowl loss to the Saints. Right. But if we had this team, how many Super Bowl wins do you think we would we would have? Man, the biggest thing would be getting over New England because I don't even know how many Super Bowls they were in and even won this decade. It was a lot. So I think at least a, at least a couple. They would be in at least a couple, two or three maybe. It just depends on New England and also Denver. 
you know, you'd have some really top teams that you'd have to face up against and the AFC. And so, yeah, I'd probably say a couple. Um, I think they'd definitely be in a lot of AFC championship games. I think they might be one of those, you know, one of the teams that's consistently competing for a Super Bowl. But it's just hard, man, to, to say you'd beat, you know, Tom Brady or Peyton Manning. That, I mean, those two are fantastic. So I'd probably say a couple. Um, but they certainly would have a good chance, I would say, to win a few. Yeah, it, it looks like social media is picking us to win two Super Bowls. Um, which is fair. I mean, you got to go through Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. And, and just looking at this from 2011, so after, um, not the year after we lost the Super Bowl, uh, because that was Packers Steelers, we saw Tom Brady five times in the Super Bowl, and then we saw Peyton Manning twice. Um, so I mean, that counts for seven of the ten chances that you have to make the Super Bowl. So it's it's clear that we would have to go through those two. Um, so that's that's already hard enough to go through those two. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's the hump. And I, I don't foresee, you know, us winning the first couple of years because you got to gel. But I mean, later in those years, as those two get older, that we have a better chance. Um, and then let's continue on with our uh, season predictions. Upcoming, the next, the following two weeks we got here, we're going to predict our week five and week six um games here so in week five we go to cleveland to play the browns cody how do you how do you think this uh turns out for us um mm -hmm. michael michael says that we're gonna win uh i also believe that we're gonna win i i don't think the browns are that great of a team even with their upgrades mm -hmm. with austin hooper and in their upgrades with the defense i just i don't think they're going to be able to do it um at least against the colts so both Michael and I have a win. Cody, how do you see this playing out? Oh, man, that's tough for me to say they're going to win. If it was at home, yeah, I would say they're going to win. But going into the dog pound, man, that's just – that's always hard and a tough place to win. I mean, those fans in Cleveland are crazy. And so Cleveland's a talented team. I honestly think they were held back a lot last year by just the inept coaching um, that they had. And so, you know, throwing an, throwing an offensive mind now that – actually is not Freddie Kitchens and I think they honestly do are going to be a better team record wise this year because they have a lot of talent they have a you know obviously their wide receivers their running backs are fantastic and so they've upgraded their offensive line at least on paper and so I think you know it's I don't think it's going to be like a blowout I just think that's going to be a tough game to win you know you got that defense which I think has some talent on it as well and so I think it's just going to be a tough game. I, I honestly am going to say a loss here just because of just like I mentioned. So that, that might be a little controversial, but I think Cleveland is, you know, not being talked about as much obviously this year as they were last year. But yeah, I just think Cleveland's pretty talented. And I think this is a game that the Colts could honestly find themselves in trouble in. Yeah. I mean, we, we talked a couple of weeks ago, I mean, at least me and Michael did um, for some reason, the Colts, they just, they find those games that they should win and they lose them out of nowhere. And that's just been like the Colts mantra for the last decade, it seems. Um, so I, yeah, this, this could easily be one of those games that we do just lose. Um, and then moving on in week six, we play the Bengals at home. Uh, Joe Burrow comes to Indy for the first time. How do you, uh, how do you see this, this one playing out? Yeah, yeah, I, I look at this one as a win. Probably one of the easier ones on the schedule for the Colts this year. I know Joe Burrow's good, but, I mean, let's face it, Cincinnati is not a good football team. And uh, I, I just think, yeah, overall they were – obviously they picked number one for a reason last year, and I think this is going to be one of the easier games for the Colts, especially at home. I think that they're definitely going to win this game. You know, we're, for me, I think they're going to be frustrated after that loss, like you mentioned. So they always seem to lose a game they shouldn't lose. And I think they're going to be really frustrated thinking they should have beat Cleveland and they're going to come out and they're going to put a whopping on Cincinnati. So I have the Colts winning this one pretty easily, honestly. Yeah. And for all those reasons, both Michael and I also chose this one as well. Um, it, it's, it's the Cincinnati Bengals. Like you said, they're, they're just not a good football team. It really kills me because I've been a, a Bengals fan, like just as long as I've been a Colts fan. Um, but I believe blue a little bit more, but yeah, the, the Bengals, they're just not that great. And I think they have a chance with, you know, T Higgins and 
Joe Burrow come in through the draft, but I don't think year one is going to be that, that breakthrough. So, all right, Cody. So moving on a little bit here, we are going to break down or really kind of decide all of the best players in the AFC South. And to help do this, to create our all AFC South team, we're going to actually bring on a couple of brawl accounts here. We've got Justin from Titans brawl and Lori from the Jaguars brawl guys. How are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Thank you so much for uh, having me on. Yeah, doing well. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, I've, I've been watching uh, all your guys' stuff on social media. Justin, I mean, I know you get to talk to a lot of the players before the draft, especially the incoming rookies. Uh, Lori, I know the Jaguars were all – you're, you're new to the Jaguars were all, correct? Yes, yes. Uh, we've, we've had uh, one episode uh, recorded so far, so we're really, uh, you know, getting things rolling now. Great, great. I mean, it's, it's a fun and exciting time, especially with, I mean, no sports going on, just finding – things to talk about and just being able to talk about sports. I, I think that's great. Uh, Justin, how was, uh, I know you went to the, you, you covered the NFL draft this year. How, how was that experience for you? Yeah, it was a, was a great experience. Uh, you know, I, I had developed um, an interview series a few years ago, um, had an idea to start interviewing the incoming uh, rookie class uh, and it's really taken off for me. So, you know, been really blessed and, and uh, lucky to enjoy that process. Uh, this most recent year, I was able to complete uh, 141 interviews with the incoming class. About, I want to say about 110 of them got drafted. So it um, was, was really nice to, to talk to you know, a lot of those guys. And I had about 15 first-round picks um, uh, there at the top alone. So, you know, really, really fun process for me to get to know these guys and, you know, see where they come from and understand their backgrounds and their stories and for draft heads like myself, you know, talk schematics, right? Get into the scheme that they played in college and, and you know, get into the teams that they've been meeting with throughout the process, try to help, um, you know, sort of break down where these teams are looking in terms of positional need, uh, you know, and, and kind of tip off, um, you know, as, as much as I can uh, in that direction. So just really had a good time doing it. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I mean, I know a couple of your interviews are for players that even the Colts drafted. So we were able to, I mean, retweet some of that stuff. So that was really cool. And uh, thank you for that. Um, so, okay. So let's go ahead and start with the offense. I think the offense is pretty simple. Uh, I mean, a quarterback, running back, two wide receivers, a tight end. We're going to go ahead and throw flex in there because nobody really runs a fullback as, as often as I feel like teams should. And then the five offensive linemen. So, guys and girls, uh, who do you <laughs> see as the best quarterback in the division? Who should be on this team? And remind you, we still have to consider Deshaun Watson on the Texans. Yeah, I mean, I don't even think there's uh, – not about considering. I mean, it's got to hands down be Deshaun Watson, I think, um, of the four quarterbacks uh, that we're looking at in the division. Obviously, you know, very curious to see what Phillip Rivers does in Indianapolis. Um, you know, wasn't his greatest year last year, but, you know, there's some question marks there with the O-line and whatnot. So interesting to see if he's got anything left in the tank. Of course, Ryan Tannehill played, you know, fantastic for the Titans down the stretch, you know, taking them all the way to the AFC championship game. But, you know, putting my personal bias aside, and I think putting all biases aside, I mean, how do you not go to Sean Watson here, right? Yeah, I'm going to have to agree uh, as well, because especially considering it's all AFC South, um, Deshaun is hands down the pick. Um, obviously, Philip hasn't uh, gotten a snap. Ryan, you know, is, you know, like, like Justin mentioned, that's great. And all, you know, how he took them, uh, how he took the Titans to the playoffs last year. Um, Gardner Minshew is still just uh, one year in. It's, uh, you know, undoubtedly Deshaun Watson. Yeah, I agree too. Undoubtedly Deshaun Watson. I mean, he's the most proven quarterback out of any of these guys. You know, Ryan Tannehill obviously had a great year last year. Phillip Rivers, we think, might have a better year with some, you know, better pieces around him, if you will. But, yeah, I think undoubtedly definitely Deshaun Watson for me as well. All right. I mean, that, that's super easy. Deshaun Watson as the quarterback for the All-AFC South team. Now, this one, this one gets interesting because we – so for the running back position, we've got guys like Leonard Fournette, David Johnson, Derrick Henry, Marlon Mack, and now uh, Jonathan Taylor, both being at the Colts. I want to hear this conversation a little bit. Let's start with 
Derrick Henry. Let's talk. Let's go out to Justin at, with Titans Brawl. Do you think Derrick Henry should be the running back? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, 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 again, this is, uh, you know, a bit more of a, a tighter uh, position group, as you mentioned. But to me, it's almost as obvious as the Deshaun Watson, uh, the Deshaun Watson choice. And again, I, you know, call me out if you think I'm being biased. But I mean, hey, you know, Derrick leads the league in rushing last year. Uh, you know, takes him to the playoffs, really just has, an un, you know, unbelievable in the playoffs in that first game against New England. Somehow gets even better in that second game against, you know, the number one seed in the AFC, Baltimore Ravens. Uh, for me, it's got to be Derrick Henry. You know, Leonard Fournette, you know, you're starting to get some friction there in Jacksonville. I don't think that story's going to end very well uh, there. You know, Marlon Mack, I think, is a very solid running back. Um, but, again, I think, again, there's a reason they're bringing in, you know, they, they, they drafted back in the early second round there uh, to form more of a duo. Uh, and then David Johnson, obviously, you know, getting traded there. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of David Johnson. Thought he was a fantastic player a few years ago. But he's, you know, sort of, you know, dealt with a lot of injuries um, since he really had that breakout year. So it'll be interesting to see if he's able to bounce back in Houston uh, this year. But I, I think this has to be Derrick Henry based on, you know, how he performed last season. Yeah, um, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and uh, I have to say Derrick Henry, even though I don't like anything of what Justin said, um, but uh, I am going to have to agree with Derrick Henry on that one. Um, Leonard Fournette also carries his team. But when you have better wide receivers, you know, then you're going to have to lean on one running back like Derrick Henry. So obviously yeah I would say he's the choice there but I mean I went there's there's only friction uh, over in Jacksonville because of you know how, how many you know star players have to be paid but um, I wouldn't say there's really any friction he's like the only guy that there's no friction with and it was really only you know obviously Tom Coughlin that you know started a bunch of stuff but just not to get too much off track but um, Derek Henry would unfortunately be, I would say, the pick, but Derek, I mean, um, but Leonard Fournette is a close second. Come on, come on. You got to give me that. <laughs> no, I won't give you that. I'm going to say Marlon Mack, man. He fantastic, but I, you know, I got to go. I do got to go Derek Henry just because obviously led the league last year. It was fantastic. A huge reason why the Titans were in the position that they were in. Um, but yeah, you know, Jonathan Taylor has the potential, I think, to be a really good running back, but obviously he's still a rookie. And so I can't really throw him in, you know, day one. I know some Colts fans kind of are and thinking, you know, he's going to be the next whatever, you know, Hall of Fame running back, but I can't do that yet. So I got to go Derrick Henry. He's the most proven. He's been the most durable. And yeah, he, he just led his team really well last year. So I don't see that changing. He's, you know, and it seems like the Titans really he kind of came on more as the year went on from what I saw. So I got to agree. Derrick Henry is probably the guy that I got there at, at number one for the AFC South. And it's really somebody that, I mean, Deshaun Watson can just hand the ball off to and he just gets all the yards on him on his own. So um, yeah, I do agree with all three of you here. Derrick Henry is kind of reluctantly that, that player, I guess it's not really reluctant for Justin because it's his own player, but I, I, I do feel you, Lori. Um, Reluctantly, Derrick Henry is probably the selection here. All right, so wide receiver number one. This is where we we really get into some depth in the South. Um, obviously, DeAndre Hopkins no longer in the AFC South, so we don't think. Thankfully, we don't have to deal with Deshaun. Or I'm sorry, uh, DeAndre Hopkins anymore in our division. But we do have guys like T.Y. Hilton, A.J. Brown, um, Will Fuller uh, fills in that slot for Hopkins and D.J. Chark, um, along with some other depth pieces on each team of those four guys though who do you think is our wide receiver number one for that for this team um I I would I mean T.Y. Hilton is a really good um uh, obviously receiver he's proven especially you know with uh with Andrew Luck uh and you know just having that the record that he has um you know, DJ Chark is, is much taller and, you know, I would say he would be a really good on the number one, uh, especially in this position. Uh, what, what do you guys think about um, DJ or TY being uh, like arguing yeah, for I mean, that for number, me, that number um, one spot? 
I don't even. I'm, I'm not going to have DJ on this two. team. Truth be told, but Ty Hilton, Ty Hilton will be. Um, you know, uh, for me, it's tight. I, it's oh, tough man. for me to name a number one or number two, but Ty Hilton has to be on this team, uh, and I'm excited. Um, you know, as a as a neutral fan, uh, to see what what he's going to do this year. Now that I think he's got a better number two there, you know, I think he's you know he's a very good player. The stats, you know, maybe haven't pointed in that direction as of late. But when you watch the tape, I mean, undoubtedly, T.Y. Hillen's a phenomenal wide receiver. And I think he suffered from, you know, A, having, you know, Jacoby Brissett as his starting quarterback last year. And also, and B, not having um, a really solid number two receiver that can also command the attention um, of the defense. And both those things should change this year. You know, I think Michael Pittman was a fantastic draft pick for the Colts. Uh, you know, get a chance to come in there and really establish himself as the number two that they haven't had um, as of late. And then, of course, with Philip Rivers taking over Jacoby Brissett, um, you know, job as a starting quarterback, I think there's a good chance that uh, the NFL is reminded this year of how good t- of a receiver T.Y. Hilton is. So, undoubtedly, he has to be on this team. Yeah, I appreciate the T.Y. Hilton love there. Yeah, he's a guy that I feel like he's just been so underrated throughout his entire career. I mean. Yeah, you talk about Andrew Luck, but you got to think he's played with a lot of different quarterbacks because of the negligence of protecting Andrew Luck for all those years. I believe Philip Rivers is his eighth or ninth quarterback that he'll be playing with now, um, which is absolutely wild. But yeah, you're right. Like with Jacoby Brissett last year, just a guy that for whatever reason was afraid to take those deep shots. I believe the Colts were 28th in the league in terms of like plays over 20 yards. And so you know, getting the throw into a guy like Philip Rivers, while you know, while 2019 might not have been the best season in his career in terms of touchdown to interception ratio, he still was sixth in the league overall in, in passing yards. And so, got to think T.Y. Hilton's going to get a lot more yards. And and, and it was a weird year for T.Y. Hilton. I mean, honestly, besides last year, he's been pretty durable his entire career. And so, just kind of a freak thing last year. I mean, T.Y. Hilton though was, you know, showing why he wasn't, you know, a number one receiver with the Colts before that injury, even with Jacoby Brissett. So throwing in a guy like T.Y. Hilton with Phillip Rivers, I think will only serve him and just serve the Colts well. So, yeah, I'm probably going to go T.Y. Hilton number one. But I also like A.J. Brown as well. I think he had a phenomenal rookie season. I don't want to discredit him. But I just think based off of experience and, and just all the different stuff that T.Y. Hilton's had to deal with, you know, throwing him with – if we're doing this on the team with Deshaun Watson, I think that's a match made in heaven right there. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of the next DeAndre Hopkins yeah. for Deshaun Watson. Uh, we also got to remember, T.Y. Hilton did lead the league in 2016 with receiving yards. Um, he was the receiving yards champion that year. So um, this is a wide receiver that has caught a lot. Um, but, yeah, injuries the last year only gave him 10 games. So moving forward here, uh, we got T.Y. at the number one spot. Who's the second wide receiver? Uh, this could be any depth position. This could be a current starter. This could be a backup. Um, I mean, we we still got you know Corey Davis, Corey Davis, Adam Humphreys, Will Fuller, Brandon Cooks, Kenny Stills, DJ Chark, uh, DD Westbrook, Michael Pittman. Who do you guys really see as this number two wide receiver on the team? Yeah, lots of good players to choose from there, as you mentioned. Um, but I I do have to go with AJ Brown here, you know, and I, and I think I know I'll probably get some disagreement maybe here, but. You know, AJ, for me, I think if we have this discussion a year from now, and it's no disrespect to T.Y. Hilton at all, but I think, uh, you know, there's a chance that AJ could take that, you know, number one spot if we're having this conversation a year from now. Just just a terrific rookie season. You know, he comes in and he's got to deal with a quarterback change in the middle of the year with, you know, the, the passing offense was just atrocious, um, you know, for the first several games with Marcus Mariota, you know, leading the charge there. Then Ryan Tannehill comes in and things just change completely. You know, it, it really just changed on a dime. You got A.J. Brown coming in with Ryan, you know, Ryan Tannehill just was throwing him up. And, you know, the yards after catch, you can look it up. And, and yards after initial contact was were just two terrific metrics for A.J. Brown to deal with all he dealt with too, with that quarterback change in the middle of the season. And, you know, and keep in mind, there's a lot of mouths to feed on that offense. You know, obviously Derrick Henry is front and center. So, you know, getting a lot of carries. You got, you know, you had – Delaney Walker was hurt for a lot of the year, but you got a tight end in Delaney Walker. You got a tight end in Jonu Smith. You got Corey Davis, who was expected to be the number one receiver going into the year. You got Adam Humphreys, who you, they paid, you know, $10 million a season and, and was healthy for the majority of the year. For A.J. Brown to come in and, and have a thousand receiving yards as a rookie, you know, with all those guys around him and again, dealing with 
uh, a passing offense that was quite bad for nearly half the season um, is very impressive for, to do what he did as a rookie. So for me, you know, despite, you know, I respect DJ Chark. I think he's a great player. Yeah, excited to see what Brandon Cooks does there in Houston. I think Will Fuller's a terrific player as well. But for me, uh, it's got to be AJ Brown. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, it's DJ Chark. Um, AJ Brown, yeah, he's had one season, uh, so I don't see how you make um, ha- how you are above uh, someone like DJ Chark, especially when we already have Ty Hilton as number one. He's already our speedy guy. If we're only having two wide receivers, we need a true wide out number one, and that's DJ Chark. Uh, not A.J. Brown. He's only six foot tall. One year in, I feel like D.J. is more proven. Um, his team leans on him more than A.J. at this point. You have to agree with that. Uh, so I say it's D.J. over A.J. Yeah, this one's tough for me. Like, you both make really good points there. I don't know. I just – I really like – like, I like D.J. Chark, but I don't know. I just really like what A.J. Brown brought. I know probably we'll get a disagreement there, but, you know, just watching him for two games, like – He's a phenomenal player in his own right, and so I'd probably Two go games. him. What's that? Come on, man. Two <laughs> games. Well, that's that's just. I, I don't know I'm how. Doing, so. No, no, I got you. I got you. Hey, but I mean, I don't see how it's how it's not DJ Chark. We don't have a true number one on this all AFC t- South team. So literally, any the shortest cornerback in um, you know NFC North will beat the AFC South. Come on, guys. Let's 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 think about this. We have to go against their other divisions, okay? All AFC South, and you're going to pick A.J. Brown? Come on, don't we need a full, a, a tall, true number one? So just throwing some stats in here, guys, um, because, you know, devil's advocate here. I've got to keep everything fair. Uh, DJ Chark has played two seasons, a total of 26 games, and has a little over 1,100 yards. I know, going stats, going stats. <sighs> I know the states. But, I mean, the stats, they don't, they don't help my argument. If, if he's the but, true you number know, one wide receiver and the Jaguars lean on him more, he only had 1,000 yards last year, 1,008, where, I mean, the rookie had 1,051 yeah. yards, and he's only played his 16 games over 26. So, I mean, A.J. Brown has nearly yeah. the same amount of yards. He's only a, 132 yards less than somebody that's played two seasons. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it, but – like and and you, I know that AJ he he was a rookie, but if you think about what DJ had last year, even also like you know DJ is the second. It's in his second year. He had like who are the quarterbacks? He had you know Nick Foles, and he's running with a rookie. Like I mean, if I if if you guys both are saying AJ, then I I can't. You know I don't have the Texans here to to help me out, but. We do have a flex position, so maybe DJ will make the flex position. Why won't AJ make the flex position? That makes That's no true. sense. I mean, they're both on the team, right? <laughs> yeah, but if you want to think about true positions, are are we just going to, you know, say, hey, well, let's throw a fucking wide receiver at O-line because he's still on the team. No, let's look, let's look at our positions. Flex, six foot tall, and true number one, DJ, six four. Can we agree? So here we go, guys. Let's vote. In, <laughs> let's just vote on this one. Um, AJ Brown or DJ Chark? Justin, what do you got? Yeah, I got AJ for sure. We know Lori's got DJ and Cody. You're the you're the tiebreaker here, man. Well, I already said AJ, so I better just stick with that. But I'm probably gonna get yelled at. So <laughs> it's fine. This is this is good. This is passionate talking. No hard feelings. No hard feelings. Passionate. <laughs> got it. As long as you know nobody leaves, rage leaves here, and just quits um this is good um all right so let's let's get moving on here uh let's do a little bit shorter i mean those were like you know the three main positions i feel like on any team quarterback running back wide receiver um just so we can keep up on time here let's go to tight end we've got jack doyle johnny smith darren fells or tyler eifert who do you guys got as our tight end doyle yeah that's a tough one that's a tough one uh I probably lean Jack Doyle right now as well. Um, I think, you know, Jack's a very good player, Um, you know, pretty versatile for them. They're down in Indy. Again, I do think if we have this conversation a year from now, there's a good chance that John Smith, uh, you know, establishes himself this year since Delaney Walker is, you know, no longer in the picture and John new really gets a chance to to be the number one tight end this year. Um, And, and, you know, really made some, some freakish plays last year when he got a chance. 
but for for now, I definitely think Jack Doyle is the um, is is the more established player, is the more proven player at this point. So this is probably the toughest choice for me so far out of all the ones we've dealt with. But I'll, I'll, I'm going to go with Jack Doyle. Cody, I'm assuming you probably have no like you don't no reservations. Yeah, you don't need to defend that, do you? Um, no, this is probably the easiest one for me. Jack Doyle's incredible. Um, he you know he's not obviously George Kittle or Travis Kelsey. He's very reliable, but he's not like the big play guy, but he has just been a major security blanket for all the quarterbacks he's played with. And I just love Jack Doyle. just love his story coming in as he was formerly of the Titans. I believe he was actually claimed by the Colts from the Titans practice squad um, or something of that nature. So yeah, Jack Doyle's just been fantastic. I have no reservations about putting him as a tight end number one, you know, maybe maybe you get another more explosive tight end at the flex position or whatever we do at the flex position. But Jack Doyle is a guy that you can go out there and you know, he's going to help you out when you're in trouble. You know, if, if he's wide open, he's, he's more than likely going to make the catch and, and that's so valuable. So Jack Doyle, yeah, no, undoubtedly my num- number one, number one tight end um, here on the AFC South team. Great. All right. So let's move the flex. This, I mean, this is all the positions here. I feel like, um, so we know, Lori really, really wants DJ Tark on this team. Um, but let's let's just hear your guys' one person who should be who should fill this flex position. Yeah, this is this is a tough one for me as well. Uh, I, I probably lean Chark, um, but I think you got a n- number of good candidates here, right? I mean, Will Fuller is a fantastic player. He was only a little healthier at times. I think you know, you, you can, even with his you know health situation, you can make a strong case for Will Fuller here. I think you can make a strong case for Brandon Cooks here as well. Obviously. Hasn't played a game in the division yet, but, you know, we saw what he was able to do in New England and you know, maybe wore out his welcome a little bit there. And, you know, his tenor in L.A. with the Rams was, you know, a little up and down, but a very talented player uh, nonetheless. And again, you know, uh, throw some love John New Smith's way as well, because I think John New is, is going to have a really big season this year. But, uh, I, you know, you know, I probably lean DJ Chark here based on, uh, you know, his skill set also is, you know, a big tall guy, but also as a deep speed guy, right? We, you know, if there's any questions about DJ, it's the hands, but terrific uh, deep ball guy. So I, you know, think DJ would make a lot of sense here. Yeah. Cody, how do you feel about that? I think that's fair. Yeah. I guess I didn't know if the flex <laughs> was more wide receiver running back. I mean, DJ chart though, I, I have to give him credit, even though we've, I feel like I've kind of dogged him <laughs> this whole episode. Uh, you no, know, he's a guy that, yeah, uh, he hasn't had the, uh, quarterback play maybe of A.J. Brown the second half of the season last year or T.Y. Hilton has had in the past and so I want to give him a little bit of credit I think that you know playing with a rookie I thought he played pretty well things considered and so it'd be interesting to see now as Gardner Minshew goes into year two how he continues to develop and how that impacts you know more stats for D.J. Chark and so I agree Laurie with having a bigger body wide receiver I always kind of like that variety in on your team you know having kind of the speed guys like T.Y. Hilton and the bigger body type red zone threats. So yeah, DJ Chark, I have no, I I have no problem putting him here on the list. You got any extra, extra for us, Lori? Um, you know, they, they say, if you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say it. It's like, no, I'm just kidding. Please put DJ Chark on here for me guys. (laughs) <laughs> All right. So, no, Brandon Cooks is going to be a good. Sorry to, um, sorry about that, yep. Justin. I think Brandon Cooks is going to be a good argument, though. After, um, you know, he plays uh, at least the first couple of games because his last like four seasons, he's had over a thousand yards. Yeah, so, I, I think Brandon Cooks um, will end up taking that number one spot for the Texans over Will Fuller. I think the injury issues with Will Fuller is just yeah. going to move him down the depth chart, like it always has. It seems like. Okay, so uh, let's move on to the offensive line here. Um, I, I'm a little biased. I feel like the Colts have the best offensive line. Yeah, uh, I think um, I think this is really a two-team race or a two-horse race here, truthfully. But uh, I think it's got to be the Colts or the Titans, and I'm going to go with the Colts. Uh, I do think, again, chemistry is a big thing. Uh, you know, you got Quentin Nelson, obviously, who's you know already one of the best offensive linemen in the NFL. Um, I, I just think as a unit, you know, Anthony Costanzo over there and, and Ryan Kelly, I think the Colts got a really good group here. I think the Titans got a pretty good group as well. When I look at guys like, of course, you know, Taylor Lewan, uh, you know, is probably the best left tackle in the division. I think Roger Saffold is a fantastic left guard. Um, and I think Ben Jones is, is a pretty good center in his own right, really the glue of that Titans O-line. But 
uh, I am going to give the edge to the Colts. You know, the Titans did lose Jack Conklin over the offseason, so a bit of a question mark at right tackle. We'll have to see how they're able, you know, whether that's veteran Dennis Kelly or whether it's first-round pick Isaiah Wilson, um, sort of have to see how that progresses as the season goes on. And, you know, with, uh, with the Titans' right guard being Nate Davis, a third-round pick from, from the season ago, had a, a very, you know, up-and-down rookie season, started slow, got better as things went on. Certainly expect him to take a step forward, but, um, you know, it's still fair to identify that as a potential uh, position of weakness on the Titans O-line. So overall as a unit, again, I think it's a two-horse race, but I am going to give the edge to the Colts here. Yeah, Um, and I would disagree. I think, honestly, Anthony Costanzo, I think they're both really good left tackles, but nobody talks about Anthony Costanzo. I think he's honestly a top five left tackle in the league. Um, And I know, I think it was PFF just rated, you know, the Colts tackles is the third best in the league. And I think Costanzo is a big reason why. I mean, he's, you know, phenomenal run blocker, but he's also gotten a lot better in pass protection the last few years. And I think he's phenomenal. I think he gets so overshadowed by a guy like Quentin Nelson, but in his own right, I think he is one of the best left tackles in the league. And so you can imagine how ecstatic I was. I know he was contemplating retirement and that he, he's going to play at least two more seasons. So uh, that certainly bodes well. And then you mentioned Ryan Kelly, who I believe is the top three center in the league. And, and then Braden Smith, who I think is right. He originally was drafted as a guard in 2018, but he actually slid over to tackle and he's been really played really well actually as a right tackle in the league. And so overall, I think he's underrated. Um, I think if there's any question of like, you know, which position you would, you would say needs to be upgraded potentially it's Mark Glowinski, but I think I kind of look at him as just an average starter in the league. And so for me, it's like, it, if that's your weakest link on the line is an average right guard, I think you can get away with that. So I think the Colts, obviously they were seventh overall in terms of running the football last year, the Titans were better than, than them in that department, but they're really good in pass protection as well. And I think just the addition of, you know, a new offensive line coach this last year kind of helped them elevate their game, maybe not statistically, but, efficiently I think that they're they got better and so you know another year of really you know more chemistry on that offensive line having all five starters back again I think is going to serve them huge but I agree I think Titans and Colts are probably the top two but I would go probably Colts just edging out the Titans for those reasons that I just mentioned yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Colts um I mean yeah yeah I'm gonna go with the Colts on this one um and uh, I think, you know, the, the Colts, they have a really good passing um, offensive line. Obviously, Tennessee is really good at run blocking. Um, the Jaguars have, you know, a real beat up offensive line. Uh, you know, they can't Cam Robinson tore his ACL in you know, the first game last year. Uh, so they really had a rotation going. Uh, they were even running um, like a rotation during the like in the middle of uh, offensive drives last year, which was like really strange to see. Um, it's, it just seems like Doug Marone, uh, even despite him being an offensive line coach, it seems like they're not putting any attention to their offensive line, uh, which is really frustrating. So I would say they're dead last in this division, uh, despite having a pretty good center in Brandon Linder. Um, hopefully this year uh, they can, you know, bring some depth back. They got Brent, uh, ben Barch, who likes to drink, uh, you know, egg, egg yolks and Gatorade mixed together. It's kind of disgusting, but um, I'm going to go ahead and say the Colts offensive line on this one. All right. That wraps up our offensive, uh, the offensive team here. Uh, let's move to the defense here. Um, and th- this should go a little quicker, uh, just the way I'm going to break this down. So we have two teams that run a base 4-3 with the Colts and the Jaguars, and then both the Titans run a 3-4 uh, base D. So we're going to go just with a 4-3 defense, a standard, you know, old school 4-3. So let's just pick four defensive linemen. Uh, We're not going to break it down into each defensive end and each defensive tackle because because we're running – two teams are running the 3-4 and two teams are running the 4-3. It's it's a completely different position in all of the positions. So let's just talk about the four best – uh, linemen. Let's start off with our best defensive linemen. Uh, we've got guys like Justin Houston, DeForest Buckner, uh, Jeffrey Simmons. I'm sorry, Jeffrey Simmons, Isaiah Mack, JJ Watt, Brandon Dunn, Josh Allen, Al Woods, uh, and Yannick 
Nagakwe. Let's go with the, the number one. Who's the number one defensive lineman position? Yeah, I'll go with uh, DeForest Buckner. You know, obviously he hasn't played a game in the division yet, but, uh, you know, there's a reason the Colts paid the price that they did to acquire him. Uh, and then, you know, a reason they gave him that massive extension that they gave him. Um, very talented player, going to cause, I think, a lot of havoc in the trenches this coming season. Any any disagreements with DeForest Buckner? No, no. DeForest Buckner, clearly the number one to me. Lori, how about you? <clears throat> um. Yep. Uh, I know this one's hard for you because can, the Jaguars do actually have a pretty decent defensive line here. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, if if you if you think about right now, we don't even know if you know Ngakwe is going to play um, for the the Jaguars next year. Josh Allen is an awesome rookie, but if we're thinking about all AFC South, um, I mean. But, I mean, I don't know if, if we're picking, so we can't pick anybody that just left the AFC South, but we can pick somebody that hasn't played yet. Cause then come on, we got to go with Clay Campbell, but if we can't pick him, he's then no longer on an AFC South team. I know, I know, I know. So yeah, let's go with Bookner here. Um, and uh, let's go. With Bookner. All right. So DeForest Buckner, <laughs> uh, how about the second defensive lineman? On the team, I mean, we, we still got guys like J.J. Watt, again, Josh Allen, Jeffrey Simmons, Justin Houston. Who do you guys have here? Yeah, for me, if I'm going with number two, and again, of course, using the current day roster, then I am going to go with Yannick Ngakwe, and maybe it's not the most uh, popular choice, but, and he probably, you know, he may not be a Jaguar when the season starts, but for now, you know, he does still play yeah. in Jacksonville at the time of this episode, and, and I do think that Yannick Ngakwe is a very good player, so for me, he's, he's going to be my number two. Yeah, well, for I, we agree with something for the first time. Woo! Mm, get <laughs> yeah, it. I'm going to agree with that, too. Yeah, Yannick Ngakwe right now is a Jaguar, and he's a fantastic pass rusher. I almost wish he would he would have become a free agent and the Colts would have signed him. But, uh, but yeah, no, he's, he's a guy that mm-hmm. I really – I like a lot. I think he's a good pass rusher, and I think he's – you know, whether he's on the Jaguars or whether he go, goes somewhere else, I think he's going to be fantastic. So – as it stands right now, yeah, Yannick Ngakwe, number two for me as well. So I cannot wait for the reports to come out tonight saying that he was traded out of the AFC South. This is going to make this all so great when we publish this episode. <laughs> uh, let's go with our third <laughs> defensive lineman. Who do you guys think uh, should fill that spot? Yeah, probably not going to be a popular choice, but I'm, I'm going to double down with Jacksonville here. I'm going to go with Josh Allen. Uh, I know he, I know he's just coming Ooh. off. No, he's just coming off a rookie season, but. I thought he was terrific as a rookie. I think the arrow is really pointing up for him. Um, you know, he's someone that I was able I, – I got a chance to spend some time with him pre-draft, really impressed with him in all aspects as a player, uh, as a kid at that time, and now really as a young man. And I think he was great this year, and I think he's going to be, um, you know, uh, really a premier pass rusher going forward. So Josh Allen for number three. Um, I'll probably go – I'll sway a little bit, but he will be on my list for four. But – I'll probably go Justin Houston because, you know, he had double digit sacks. I know he's up there in age, but he's also a fantastic run stopper, which I think that does stats don't tell the whole story there. Uh, he's just a fantastic leader and also just a still a good football player. I think he had a really, you know, good kind of comeback season after kind of a down year in Kansas City. So Justin Houston to me is still a good football player. Now, you know, if we were looking long term, I'd probably say Josh Allen just because, you know, obviously he was a rookie last year and he's his best football is ahead of him. But as it stands right now, going into the 2020 season, I'll probably have Justin Houston just slightly above him. Lori, how, how are you feeling on this uh, third position here? I'm definitely going to go with Josh Allen here, uh, Justin. Uh, you know, he's, his, his ceiling is, is uh, way high, and him coming in as a rookie is, you know, he's, he's done an unbelievable job. I think this just goes to show you, I mean, we've only got three, we got one more defensive line position, but none of you guys have even said JJ Watt, who is perennial, one of the best defensive linemen in the game. This just shows you what the AFC South has for the future. Um, So, so far we got Buckner and Nagankwe and Allen. Who do you guys see as the fourth position? I know Cody, you just mentioned Justin Houston at number three and then Josh Allen at four. So I'm assuming you're going to want to say Justin Houston again at four. Uh, but Justin and Lori, who do you guys have at number four? Yeah, I'm going to, you know, just for the sake of, of conversation, I know obviously, you know, 
I think Justin Houston is a terrific player. Obviously, J.J. Watt is who he is. But looking at them getting up in age, I want you guys to listen to this episode again a year from now uh, and, and watch what Jeffrey Simmons, I think, is going to do um, this coming season. Now, the thing about Jeffrey Simmons, as everyone knows, is you know he tore his ACL in, in, in February of last year as he prepared for the Combine. You know, was expected to miss his entire rookie season. Um, you know, was really a top 10 talent in that draft last year. And, and, and you know, I'm a, a big draft guy, as you guys know. Jeffrey Simmons was, was definitely a top 10 talent in the draft last year. You know, Titans get him, I think it was at 20th overall due to that ACL injury. Everyone expects him to miss his entire rookie campaign. Um, just what, you know, what a freak of nature. He returns midway through the season. His first NFL game against the, the Chargers. I want you guys, you know, if you have any reservations, put on that tape. He had three NFL practices under his belt as he went into his debut. Three NFL practices. He absolutely dominated that Chargers own line, walked away with two sacks in his debut, um, and was really solid throughout the year. Uh, you know, tailed off a little at the end, and I think you can kind of chalk that up to recovering from the ACL uh, and, 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 you know, just maybe running out of steam um, as he got towards the end of the year. But watch what Jeffrey Simmons is going to do this coming season as he's, you know, two years, remo- you know, basically almost two full years removed from that ACL surgery is a, a big deal for ACLs, A. And B, another reason I'm going to put him on this list is watch what he does this year as now he gets a chance to play that three-tech position. You know, if you know ball, you know that three-tech position gives you your best opportunity on the D-line to attack the quarterback and really get some sacks some stacks under your belt. Everyone wondered why the Titans traded it away Jarrell Casey for, for, for a bag of peanuts. You know, they got rid of Casey for absolutely nothing in return. A big reason is they wanted Jeffrey Simmons to move into that three-tech role. And that's how confident they are in, in this young man. So, of course, you know, Justin Houston's more proven. J.J. Watt is J.J. Watt. But for the sake of, of you know, age and, and who I think is going to perform at a higher level this coming season, um, I think Jeffrey Simmons is due for a real big breakout campaign. I was just going to say, I mean, I get it. Jeffrey Simmons is a good player, but heck, I could have got two sacks against the Chargers offensive line last year. They were atrocious. Uh, But, you know, seriously, though, he is a fantastic player. But I look at Justin Houston, and I think he had like seven straight games with a sack. And, you know, as past 30, I think that's absolutely phenomenal. And so, I don't know, I just make the case as of right now, Justin Houston is more proven. He's proven that he can – he's led the league in sacks only a few years ago. And I know he's getting up there in age, but, you know, he's still a fantastic player in his own right. I don't know. I just can't put a guy who didn't even play a full NFL season under his belt, as good as he may be, you know, later on. I just feel like Justin Houston still continued to prove that he is elite in getting after the quarterback and playing the defensive end position. So, yeah, I don't know. For me, I, I just have a hard time putting him ahead of Justin Houston at this time. I agree with that. Justin Houston being my pick as well all right that that was actually some pretty solid talks for the fourth position there uh let's go to our linebacker core um we got three linebackers to pick from the afc south uh i mean we've this this is a pretty good group we got miles jack uh let's see joe schobert i'm trying to read names here now i mean guys like darius leonard bobby okariki jay and brown Jayon Brown, Rashad Evans. Who do you guys see as the number one linebacker? Uh, this is this is a tough one. This might be the uh, you know as, as good as the D line group is. This might actually be the best competition uh, in my eyes. Um, I don't even know that I could you know for the sake of you know conversation. I you know I don't see these guys as you know one two three in a way. But uh, I, I'll definitely have to put Darius Leonard on my team. You know, obviously a, a terrific player. You know, had a you go back to his rookie campaign and just how terrific he was. Um, you know, I remember thinking uh, people thought that the Colts might have reached when they took him early in the second. I mean, I, for one, I, I can put my hand up as a big draft guy and I loved him, but I had him as a third rounder. So was certainly shocked when the Colts, um, you know, took him in the early second, but clearly they knew exactly what they were doing. Cause you know, I believe he, I think he actually led the league in tackles as a rookie. Um, just a terrific player and definitely has to be on this team. Yeah, before – I'm sorry, Lori and Cody. I, I really get into the whole Darius Leonard stuff here. All pro is a rookie, and, yeah, he did lead the league in the uh, in tackles, and he's shooting for 200 this season. So, fingers crossed. Uh, Lori, Cody, uh, or let's start with Lori here. Uh, who do you got as your best linebacker in the division? Oh, uh, man. Um, I, I, do, I do really like – um, you know, Darius Leonard, um, 
you know, what, his, his upside is really high. Um, and I am not a, like a huge advocate for Miles Jack, to be honest. Like, I think he's not in the correct position, um, especially as a middle linebacker. And I guess that's why they brought in, you know, Joe. Um, I would say he, he would be, you know, my pick for like weak side. Uh, but, uh, you know, I would say Darius Leonard, he's he, double digit sacks. Come on, man. You know, I, I, I like him. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and go with Darius. Cody, assuming that you do not have any, um, reservations about Darius Leonard being the number one, can we go ahead and move on to the second linebacker? Sure. I'll start it out, I guess, since I didn't speak. Um, there you go. Goodness gracious. So who are some of the options? I, I like some of the Titans linebackers. Um, who are some of those guys? I'm trying to remember their names. Me too. So the Titans linebackers, you got Jayon Brown, Rashad Evans, and Harold Landry. Justin, am I, am I missing anybody there? No, that pretty much covers it. I mean, I, for me, I mean, because you guys went with a 4-3 defense, it, it, I would I may put Harold Landry on this list, but I'm not going to now because – I can't group him with this linebacker group personally, right. you know, he's an, he's an outside linebacker in a three, four, right. But if you were to put him in a four, three, then he's certainly putting his hand in the dirt, you know, and, and playing as a defensive end. So I'm going to omit Harold Landry from this list for, for that purpose. But yeah, Jayon Brown and Rashawn Evans are really the guys that you're looking at. If you're looking for names of Titans linebackers. Yeah. Then probably Rashawn Evans. I think he's, they're both fantastic, but I think Rashawn Evans is probably the better one. If I'm not mistaken, Justin, um, he see every every time I've seen him, he just seems like he's out there making a play. And so I really like Rashad Evans quite a bit. But Gian Brown also is a very good player in his own right. I'll probably go Evans though. Yeah, that's interesting. It's funny. And don't get me wrong, I don't think there's a wrong answer there, but I'm gonna go Jayon Brown over Rashawn Evans. I, I I guess it just really depends what you're looking for. You know, Rashawn is a very uh excellent, you know, a uh, bit of an old school linebacker. Come downhill, very fast, very physical, fill a gap and get a hat on a hat, and, and he's terrific at that, and he was big in the playoffs, uh, or the majority of the playoffs for them, but I really like what Jayon Brown brings to the table as a bit more of today's linebacker. You know, he's undersized, but he's great in the run game, where Jayon really shines is in the passing game. He's terrific in coverage, uh, so I, I'm going to go Jayon Brown, but no argument from me there. I don't think there's a wrong answer between the two of them. All right, um, so let's go ahead, and, and so I'm going to say Jayon Brown uh, for that second spot. I know the four three defense and the three four defense they're completely different, and I understand a lot of a lot of your three four linebackers, especially the outside linebackers, would move into a defensive end position instead. Um, I mean, Cody and I can contest. I mean, we had Dwight Freeney and Robert Mathis move from defensive end positions to outside linebackers when Chuck Pagano came here, and honestly, I think that ruined it. Um, but that's just my personal feelings on that. So let's go ahead and move on to that third uh, best linebacker position. Any any position, just third best linebacker. Let's. Uh, who do you guys got? Yeah, that that's tough for me as well because now I'm deciding between um, you know Rashawn Evans and, and Miles Jack, and I think they're both terrific players. Uh, I'm going to lean Miles Jack here, even if he is playing a little out of position at times. I just think his you know overall ability as a playmaker is going to give him the slight edge for me here. Yeah, I'll probably go Miles Jack as well. I really like what Miles Jack brings to the table. Yeah, it's a bummer that the, that the Jaguars don't use him correctly, like you're saying, Lori, because I think he's fantastic. He's super athletic, uh, big, good playmaker for the Jaguars on that defense. You know, I I always enjoy watching him play whenever they, they play the Colts. But I'd probably go Miles Jack. I really really like what he brings to the table. Yeah, I'm I'm. I'm I'm glad you guys are going, Mile Jack. I'm excited to kind of see what Joe um, Schober is going to do for this season. Hopefully, you know, he makes a bigger impact because I just think Miles Jack is, you know, not a true, you know, middle linebacker, as you guys can probably see that. Yeah, and it looks like they've actually are moving Miles Jack even to that weak side linebacker position uh, outside yeah. the middle linebacker position. So hopefully that does fix him here and really propels him out to be in what he should be doing. Um, let's move on to the secondary here real quick. Uh, we got two corner spots to fill and then the two safety spots. Who do you guys see as the best corner um, in the division? Yeah, that's, that's also, um, you know, can be a difficult one. But I'm going to go with uh, Kenny Moore uh, from the Colts. I know he's spent a lot of his time at the nickel spot, but I think he's probably, 
um, slightly overall the most talented player um, in this group. I think there's some good argument for some other guys here, but I'm going to lean Kenny Moore. Lori, how do you, how, who do you think uh, should fill this position in? I mean, that's tough because, like, you, you have some you have some good guys. Like, didn't didn't Rhodes um, just come over too? Yeah, Xavier Rhodes just signed a very very low contract uh, for one year. Um, you know, Rhodes. You know, he's always done well. Um, honestly, I'm I'm not a huge fan of uh, Trey Herndon. Um, so like, it, it, that's kind of tough. I'm really excited to kind of see what C.J. Henderson is going to be able to do. Um, you know, I, I like DJ, DJ Hayden, you know, he's been, you know, even though he, he's more of a nickel corner, this is like really tough because if this was last year, you know, AJ Bouye would be my, um, would be my pick, you know, he's solid. Um, but it, you know, it's just, it's, it's pretty tough. Uh, uh, Cody, you want to, can you guys come back to me? <laughs> Absolutely. Cody, who do you got? Yeah, I'd probably have to go uh, Kenny Moore as well. I really like what Kenny Moore brings to the table. Yeah, he's a good slot corner, but he also brings a lot. He, he can play the outside, which I think is really important. Um, guy out of Valdosta State who, you know, undrafted free agent, signed with the Colts, and he's been phenomenal. He's, he's made plays, and he also is a guy that the Colts like to send on a blitz a lot, and he does a fantastic job. I mean, he, he's so small that he uses his leverage to get under offensive linemen, and and make sacks at crucial times during games. And so I really like Kenny Moore quite a lot, but I could also go with Dory Jackson here, but probably go Kenny Moore just slightly because I feel like he's a very versatile piece for the Colts. I'm going to agree with that also. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm looking up honestly stats right now. And um, honestly, it really looks like Moore takes it, takes it, you know, takes the top, takes the case. Yeah, he's, he's definitely an interesting guy who traditionally has been that slot corner uh, and then became the highest paid slot corner in the league. And now he's really going to step up into that number one corner position for the Colts. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see what we've got here. Uh, moving on to that second spot, I mean, we've got guys like Cody mentioned, Adoree Jackson. There's also guys like Bradley Roby uh, and Jerron Conley with the Texans. And then uh, so who do, you, who do you guys really see as this number two corner in the league yeah I'm gonna go with someone that you didn't even mention there actually uh for me it's it's a toss-up between Adoree Jackson and Malcolm Butler and I'm gonna lean Malcolm Butler for this spot uh, you know I went with Kenny Moore at number one who's really a slot nickel but uh you know when I look at Malcolm Butler I'm, I'm grabbing a guy on the outside that really likes to jam uh, receivers at the line and really likes to get physical with them uh it was a shame for the Titans that Malcolm Butler went down last year uh, you know, where he did because he was off to a terrific start last year. You know, you, you can put the tape on, watch how he handled uh, Odell Beckham Jr. in the Cleveland game, watch how he handled Julio Jones in the Atlanta game. He was just off to a really, really nice start. And I think, you know, given his past history and pedigree, um, I'm, I'm going to put Malcolm Butler here. He'll still be the Titans' number one corner going into this season uh, and with good reason. So he's, I'm just going to have him slightly edging out of Dory Jackson here for me. Uh, yeah, I think Malcolm, Malcolm Butler is um, a pretty good choice. You know, obviously, he's, uh, he's proven, you know, to, <clears throat> to be, you know, the, one of the main guys, you know, that, that won uh, the Super Bowl. Um, you know, he, he was the one that got that interception, right? Or, yeah, or wait. Yeah, yeah it was Malcolm. Um, so, I mean, you know, I've, I forgot that he was even, he was even uh, in the AFC staff now. Um, yeah, I would say, I would say he's, he's a pretty good pick. What do you think, Cody? Yeah, I like Malcolm Butler quite a bit. I guess I completely kind of forgot about Malcolm Butler, but he's a good player. Yeah. It's a bummer that he, uh, he missed that time. Like Justin was saying, but yeah, Malcolm Butler, I, I think he probably obviously has a number two corner. Now that I really think about it, I'm going to think he's a really good player. He's obviously the Titans number one corner. So they think he's slightly better than a Dory Jackson. So I probably agree with him. Malcolm Butler. Yeah, I'll take him there. All right. So we got Malcolm Butler and Kenny Moore. Uh, let's move on to our safety positions. Uh, with free safety, we've got Malik Hooker, Kevin Byard, Justin Reed, and Jared Wilson. I know Justin feels really, really strongly about Kevin Byard. Uh, who, who do you guys feel really should take this free safety position? Well, speaking from a Colts fan perspective, probably not Malik Hooker, probably Kevin Byard. 
because uh, Malik Hooker drafted 15th overall. Just He's had moments, but he just hasn't overall, I would say, lived up to that expectation. I think Kevin Byard has just been a fantastic safety. So, yeah, I'll probably go Kevin Byard there. Lori, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I don't have an argument really for anyone on the Jaguars. I mean, Ronnie Harrison, is pr- he's done well. Uh, I don't really like Gerard Wilson as much. Um, he, you know, he just, he has his moments where he just, you know, doesn't make a play on the ball. Um, Ronnie Harrison is still kind of coming into his own. He's a, he's a really hard hitter, but it would, it would tough to put him, it would be tough to put him, uh, you know, at the top. So I would say, yeah. 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 So we got Kevin Byard at free safety and then the strong safety position, which is where Ronnie Harrison actually is listed at. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. We are doing two separate. Yeah, Sorry yeah, about no, you're, that. You're good. So we got Ronnie Harrison uh, on the Jags. We got Jalen Watkins, Texans, Kenny Vaccaro um, on the Titans, and then Kari Willis on the Colts. Who do you guys, who do you guys want to take there? I'm a, a huge Kari Willis fan. So I'll probably go with Kari Willis. I just, yeah, there's just not also – a lot of like perennial Pro Bowl strong safeties in the AFC South right now. But I think Kari Willis is fantastic. I honestly think he was the best rookie last year from the Colts 2019 draft class. Now you can argue Bobby Okariki, but I think honestly Kari Willis was just slightly better and fantastic coming in, you know, fourth round pick. So it's kind of hit and miss with that. You know, the Colts have had Marlon Mack, and then they've also had, you know, a guy like Zach Banner who didn't even make the final 53 men roster his rookie year. So Throwing a guy like Kari Willis has he's just come in and he just you know he just took that strong safety position away from Clayton Gathers, and he just really never relented. He was fantastic, and I think that he's only going to improve here now in year two, at, entrenched as the the starter. And I, I'm really excited to see kind of how he continues to develop here in year two. Lori, do you have any opinions on the strong safety? Um, yeah, I mean if <clears throat> if. I I like Ronnie Harrison for definitely like strong safety position, obviously not like overall. Um, I mean, what what were you thinking? Were you thinking anybody from um, any other squads? Defense is not really like my, um, you know, my forte, uh, but, you know, I would definitely be willing to consider uh, somebody else you have in mind. Yeah, I definitely feel like Cody here kind of hit the ball on the head. There's not really a great safety in the AFC South, uh, especially a strong safety. So, um, yeah, there's no like hard hitters. Like the whole Titans team is pretty much like the, the most hard nosed team in the entire yeah, AFC South. I do like, um, Kari Willis, but I, uh, Kenny Vac- Vaccaro, he was pretty good last year. He, he's a pretty decent hard hitter. Um, I didn't really hear Jalen Watkins from the Texans. I mean, if we had a Texans for all account, I'm sure they'd be like, no, Jalen Watkins is the guy. Um, but I, I kind of lead Kari Willis here, just just the youth, and um, he really developed pretty quickly last year. Let's throw him in there. All right, and then real quick, uh, this should be easier because you know Adam Vinatieri is no longer technically on the roster for the Colts. They haven't really said yes or no if they're going to re-sign him. Um, so the kickers we got in the in the AFC South is Chase McLaughlin, Greg Joseph, Fiyimi Fairburn and Josh Lambeau of the four who do you guys take Lambeau Lambeau all day I mean Lambeau is like the only guy that actually I think is proven that does all right um so and then the punters got Rigoberto Sanchez Brett Kern Brian Anger and Logan Cook could this be the second Texan that we put on our team (laughs) no I love Rigo Rigo man he's fantastic uh what team does Anger play on he's a Texan you know, oh, seriously? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I thought he was a Jag. No, yeah, no, he, he, he got – he was, was like their – what, the fourth-round draft pick like three years ago? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. why I was like, who the hell does he – who picked him up? I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lori, right. Who do you think as a punter? Um, I, can, I mean, three, well, three years ago, this would have been Pat McAfee all day. <laughs> right. Unfortunately, Pat McAfee retired way too early, in my opinion. But uh, Logan, Lori, who, who Logan do you Cook, come on, Jaguars. <laughs> oh boy, now. So okay. Um, oh boy, we got two people here. 
Uh, no, go go take your boy. We no. got we got the Jaguars right. cut kicker. So there we go. We'll take Rigoberto Sanchez as the punter, and then just a general return guy. This could be anybody. Um, but the current return guys are Naheem Hines, Adam Humphreys, Leif Raymond. Those are the two Titans guys. Uh, DeAndre Carter for the Texans, and then D.D. Westbrook on the Jaguars. Who do you guys want to take? I, I have no idea about D.D. D.D. is pretty good. Um, bringing it back. Uh, yeah, I, I would say D.D. right yeah, here. He, he's pretty good. About yeah. If the Colts actually used Naheem Hines more the, this last season, he might be on the list. But yeah, he didn't really he didn't really get more return duties until like later on in the year. But I mean, that Panthers game was he was electric, so he could have a chance this next year, honestly. Yeah, he really could. All right, well that wraps up our AFC South team uh, with our offense, defense, and special teams. Be sure to check out Colts Brawl on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook if you really want to see that lineup. Lori, Justin, we'll post this out so you guys can retweet it as well, and I'll probably send you guys the images so you could also share it. Um, again, Lori, Justin, thanks for coming on. Uh, do you have anything else that you would like to say? Thanks for having me. Uh, no, thank you so much for having me. It was a blast. i um, looking forward to jumping on again and arguing with Justin on why, um, you know, the Titans are the worst. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having us on. And as always, guys, be sure to p- follow Colts Bra on all your social media and be sure to look out for our, our next podcast episode each week. Thanks again and have a good one, guys.